Hello, my name is Xander. Welcome to Selenium with Python Django. In this tutorial, we introduce Selenium and write and run tests within Selenium WebDriver, all of course within the Django framework environment. You can see from this list the packages that I'm using in this tutorial. If at any time these packages were updated and no longer work with the code that's presented in this tutorial, just let me know in the comments and I'll go ahead and recreate this tutorial with the latest packages. In this tutorial, I make the assumption that you're new to Selenium and you have basic Django knowledge of how to create a new project. The starting code for this tutorial is in the video description, so go ahead and download. I'm not going to go through a basic setup of setting up a Django application for this tutorial. So please go ahead and download that and that's where I'm going to start this tutorial. So let's answer the question, what is Selenium? If you head over to the Selenium website, here you can see it tells you Selenium automates browsers. That's it. Selenium provides us the tools to allow us to interact with a, a real browser like this, for example, to perform actions automatically. So for example, here there's a search bar. So I could type in, for example, test. That would then produce a result. Now I may want to test that as a, a user, I want, might want to test this user interface for that. So Selenium provides us the tools to be able to programmatically move over here, actually um, select the search bar, type in something and press enter. So I can do that programmatically utilizing Selenium. So you can see from the homepage here that there's a few different tools here that's going to help us perform those type of actions. So Selenium WebDriver, the ID and the grid. So in this tutorial, and this series, we're predominantly be going to be utilizing the WebDriver. So it just happens that Selenium WebDriver is one of the most, if not the most popular tool when it comes to web UI automation. Although we're using here Python, Selenium framework can be utilized in all different programming languages, be it Python, Java, C Sharp, and so on. So like other testing frameworks such as PyTest, Selenium provides us test automation. So no longer do we need to load up the web page, have a look and click some buttons, interact with the page, see if it acts how we expect. We can now automate this. So Selenium then allows us to automate web-based application testing. Ultimately, this is another tool that we can utilize when testing to create more com a more comprehensive level of testing for our application. So now we have the ability to test our application, for example, with multiple browsers, because you may or may not know, browsers will work slightly differently. So there may be different outcomes of our application or our application might react differently, sorry, on multiple browsers. So we need a way of testing that and Selenium provides us an answer for that. In addition to that, we may also want to test our application on different screen resolutions. So there are many other benefits of utilizing Selenium. Hopefully we've got a general flavor now of what potentially it is we're trying to perform with Selenium. Once we've run a few tests, you'll have a much clearer idea. So like I said previously, we're going to start from a template here. The download is in the description of the video. So go ahead and download extract the folder, open it up in Visual Studio Code or whatever software you're using. It should look something like this. Maybe one of these files will be missing. I might not include the Chrome driver. So it's going to look like this. So what you're going to need to do if you're not new to Django is you're just going to need to pip. Oh, first of all, we're going to need to create a virtual machine. Now I'm in Windows um, as specified. So uh, let's go ahead and create a, a new virtual environment. Uh, let's go ahead and do that. My fingers and my brain, they don't communicate very well. Uh, so let's go ahead and create a, a new or start the virtual environment. Okay, so we started the virtual environment. Now let's go ahead and pip install the requirements. So now we're just going to install all of these requirements here to get the application working correctly. You can see we've got Django 3.2 and Selenium. Now, of course, you could just type that into the um, Python package index and have a look for yourself, but everything's already pre-prepared here for you. So 
So it's worth going over to the Python package index and having a look at Selenium because there are some great links here to some resources that are going to be useful for you to learn a little bit more about Selenium. In addition to that, what you'll probably also find, what you will also find, is a, a PyTest Selenium package and a Django Selenium package. And they are going to help us, and we try to explore some of these packages over this series, they're going to help us um, interact with Selenium while we're utilizing the PyTest framework and Django. But we can get started with Django and Selenium by just downloading pip installing this. Like I said, we've already done that. You can see in the requirements that's already installed. So let me just take you through this basic example here. We have a new project called Core that's been set up with some URLs. So we've got three URLs here. What we're going to be utilizing is the built-in Django admin tools or the, the built-in Django login tools, sorry. So that's going to provide us a form where we can log in. So in addition to that, we've also, I've also created an index page. So I've just used the template view here. So there aren't actually any views in this application. We're just using this template view here. And that's connecting that to a template here called index. So here's all the templates. Now we're going to be utilizing the login template, the default login template. So it's in a folder called registration. And then in addition to that, we've also got, um, that isn't needed anymore, so I can delete that. So in addition to that, we've got the base, which is kind of a base app, and we're going to extend our base in all of the files here. So extend, and here we've got the actual, uh, some links here on the home page. Okay, so all we have here really is a login page and an index page with links to the login page, I think. So go ahead and run the server. Let's just quickly take a look at what this looks like. So that's pretty much it. I've got a bootstrap menu here. And I've got a login button that takes me to the login. And here I can log in. So there is a login already. It's, the username is admin and admin. That allows us to log in. That takes you back to the index page again. But this time, because you're logged in, it will show user admin. So for the purpose of this tutorial only, I've made a new file here called tests. That's on the root directory. Okay, that isn't inside of any of these folders. It's on the root directory. I've called that test, which I'm now going to call test actually. There we go. So we're using Django. So there are some specific tools we have here for Django when we're utilizing Django with Selenium. So if you head over to the testing topics and tools here, we're told that when we use in browser frameworks such as Selenium to test rendered HTML, and the behavior of web pages. Um, here you can see that we are given this tool called Live Server Test Case. So if you head over to that, that takes you down to the documentations here in Django, which explains, which explains a little bit more about Live Server Test Case. So the key point here is that when we utilize Selenium, it's going to open up or it can open up a browser window. And then it's going to perform the same type of actions that we would do to test our application, except we're going to programmatically um, or we're going to program these interactions to perform in our browser. And Selenium is then going to perform those actions in the browser. Now, because we're using a browser, we're going to need to have our web server turned on. So live server test case, like it says here, does basically the same as transaction test case but it also launches a live Django server in the background on startup, uh, on setup, and then shuts it down after we finish the testing. So transaction, transaction test case, that performs the task of creating, for example, test uh, databases. So you can see that we're going to potentially need that too, and live server test case will also provide that type of functionality. So that is very specific to Django, of course. So we're going to need to implement that when we start a new Selenium test. So let's go ahead and create a new test then. All right, so we're going to create a class called home test, and that's going to then import the live server test case. Okay, so that's what we were just talking about. So obviously we're going to need to import that in. So from Django, you're going to find that is in test, Django.test. We're going to import that, so that's the live server test case. Okay, so that's now imported in. So 
To enable us to send instructions over to the browser, we're going to need some way of taking our code, translating that into actions, and then for Selenium then to actually perform those actions in our browser. So here in comes, or well here we need the web driver. So Selenium web driver. So what we're gonna to need to do is import that in. Now we've already installed pip installed Selenium, don't forget that. So um, we are going to need to get from Selenium, we'll import the web driver. So we're going to need this in our test. So let's go ahead and now let's create a, a new test. Let's just create a simple test to test our home page. So this type of test that we're going to perform here potentially could be you to test it with PyTest or other frameworks. Um, this is just an example. So we're going to need the, the driver for this, uh, the web driver. So web driver or driver equals web driver dot and then we need to decide what type of browser we have so the browser needs to be installed initially uh, to run the tests um, so here i have chrome installed now what you're going to need to do here is just go over to chrome have a look at for example the settings so we're going to need to know what version of chrome that we're using that's going to be important we'll see in a second why that is so this is I've opened up Chrome, so go to Chrome, uh, click on the, and then go to About Chrome. That's going to take you to this page here. You can see what build we're using right there. So to be able to perform these tests with Selenium, we're going to need to download the web driver. So let's uh, type in web driver and then Chrome, Selenium. So here we're going over to the chromedriver.chromium.org. We're going to need to access and download the Chrome driver that we need for our particular version. Now here you saw that I was running uh, Chrome version 90. So it looks like here, for example, um, this is what I'm going to be running. I think that's what I advertised in the tutorial. So we're going to download this. And I'm going to select the Chrome 30, Win32. So if you're not too sure what this is, because I didn't really explain, a web driver is an open source tool for automating te automated testing of web apps across many browsers. It provides capabilities for navigating to web pages, user input, JavaScript execution, and more. Okay, so um, it's allowing a, that interaction um, with our browser. So we can programmatically create um, instructions to send across to a browser and perform those actions as if someone was actually doing it themselves with a mouse, for example. So there are now two options. I can now just set a path here to the Chrome web driver, which is right here in my folder. I added it or pasted it here into my project. Or alternatively, I can add the Chrome driver to the Windows path. So anytime I call it, Windows is going to look for that path for this particular file and run it. So if I wanted to add Chrome driver here to the path, I basically can right click and copy this path. So I've got a copy of that path. Let's go back into my command prompt here. So from the command prompt, I need to type uh, set X and then path. Um, and then I'm basically going to define, if I can find the keys, uh, the path. And now I need to define where that is. So I can just paste, there we go, and then finish off. So here, what's gonna happen is essentially window, I'm gonna add this path, this um, directory here, which is incorrect at the moment. I'm gonna add this directory here uh, to the Windows path. So anytime I'm trying to find the file, like I'm gonna do here, Windows is gonna look for the path look at the paths that are available in, in Windows environments. And then if it finds the Chrome driver, then it's going to run it. So let's go ahead and dot Chrome. Okay, so then now we've kind of set that up. Uh, let's now just make sure the tabs are correct. Okay, so now we've got that set up. Let's now go ahead and do something. So the first thing we'll probably want to do is we take this driver and we're going to now get an address. 
our URL. So uh, let's just grab our home page of our website. Okay, so we're going to navigate, first of all, open up a new window, a Chrome window, and we're going to navigate to our website. Okay, so now we want a way of, of doing something. We want to perform an action. So let's now go ahead and just make a simple test. So we're going to be utilizing a cert. So hello world. That's going to be in the driver. In the driver, we're going to get the title element. So what's happening here then? If I go over to my web page, so what I'm asking Selenium to do is to open up a browser, go to my uh, website, and then I'm going to assert. So inside of my web page, the in the head, I've got a title, and that represents hello, comma, space, world, exclamation mark. So all I'm doing here is I'm basically just testing to make sure that is correct. And that, although it's a very simple test, that is just going to give you a, a flavor of how to get this up and running. So now we've got that in place. So what's going to happen here is that uh, we're going to create or we're going to open a new Chrome window. It's going to automatically navigate to this web page, which is our website. And then it's going to assert Hello World. So it's going to look in that website um, at the title, the web page title. And if the content of that title equals hello, comma, space, world, exclamation mark, then obviously our test is true. It's going to pass. So if I were to go to my website here, I can inspect here and have a look at the title. It says hello, comma, space, world, exclamation mark. Okay, so you can see that that is going to match okay, and our test should pass. So to run the test, it's nice and simple if you're familiar with unit tests. Uh, let's go back. So let's just uh, close the server. So that is just going to demonstrate this idea of utilizing live server test case. So let's go ahead now and just run our test. So py manage py test. So a test is running. You can see then the window opened. That was a Chrome window that opened up. The test has been completed. And you can see that we ran one test and everything was OK. Now, let's just uh, change this just to show the fact that this is working. So if I added a set, a new uh, character here, obviously now that won't match. That will return false, this assert. So let's go ahead and test that again. And we should now return a fail. So you saw the window pop up again. That was a Chrome window again. The test has been performed. So behind the scenes, um, a server has been loaded up. It's closed down. Um, after the test, you can see that the test has failed because it doesn't represent that. So let's just change that back and run it one more time. You see the window kind of pop up, drop back down again, and there we go. So just as a kind of sanity check for now, although it does come in and it is a useful function later on, utilizing time allows us to, for example, delay any actions that we might want to perform. And Later on, it might be that our page loads slowly, or for example, an interaction on our page might take a few, uh, may take a second to kind of load up, for example. So we want to definitely make sure that that action is complete before we then run a different action or different test. So here I'm just going to import time. And here I'm going to set, for example, time five. So that's going to stop the action. So we're going to open up the browser now. We're going to wait five seconds, and then we're going to perform um, the, the test, or we're going to assert. So Let's go ahead and have a look at that in action. So you can see the windows opened automatically. And we're going to wait five seconds and the, the test or the assert will then complete. And there we go. So we ran one test. It took 6.629 seconds. Of course, we waited five seconds. Um, and the test is still successful. So let's move over to a second example. Now, here, for example, we have a, a login option where the user can log in. And I've already said that admin admin is the username and password. So let's go ahead now and build a test so that we can automate the process of navigating to this page, entering admin and admin, logging in, pressing the login button, and then reading the fact that this should now be logged in as admin. So that's going to be the test. 
so let's go ahead now and build a new test right so we're going to call this class uh, login form test okay uh, so we're bringing the live server test case again so let's now go ahead and build a test so we're going to this time test our form okay so let's just uh let's just do this manually driver uh so we're going to bring the driver again that's going to be the web driver obviously we're still using chrome and now we can go ahead and visit our page so that's the first thing we want to do is visit our page so again it's going to be the same page um, but with a new extension so let's uh, log in so we're going to go directly to this page so i'll just copy that down okay so that's the page that we're going to navigate to or open uh, that's going to need to be in singles doubles okay so now what we want to do is we want to select the form elements we want to select uh, the username and password so we can do that in many different ways in actual fact so let's just go ahead and inspect this uh, so you can see here this input if you're not familiar with HTML and CSS you can see here that it has a type it has a name it might also have an ID so ID equals ID underscore username so we can select this element on this page by ID and that's essentially what we're going to need to program here we're going to need to find this element so we can then programmatically actually add some text into it and that's going to be the same again for the password and the login button right so that's important to understand here now with selenium we can select this uh, input field in many different ways so here are all the different options we have to find the elements on the page so for example common ones by css selector uh, by class name by id or name so we saw here if, again if you're not too familiar with this you can see here we've got this input field here and uh, we've got by name so we can select this by name or by id in this case potentially so it can be a two-step process first of all we select the input and then we pass in some text so let's start with username uh, equals and then let's use the again the driver we're going to find and that's going to be we're going to find the element by in this case name so the first element the name if we inspected the html that was username that was the first input and then we go for the user password that's going to be the driver again we're going to ask it to find the element by and in this case this case the name again so let's go ahead and do that so that's the password so again i'll just show you more one more time one more time so you can see here username is the name of that and if i click here and inspect you can see that the password input the name is password so I did have this tab open here you may have seen um, that I was going to explain this but I haven't done it in this tutorial so there are other ways of locating elements within a document here uh, utilizing by class by um, but we'll cover that in a later tutorial so now we've selected we found the elements we're going to need to do something now so let's go ahead and username dot send keys so we can utilize the keyboard interaction on the page as well as the mouse and select things for example so here let's go ahead now we need to import from selenium keys so that we can utilize or simulate the keys press so selenium webdriver.com and keys import keys right so now then we're going to get that uh input here the element sorry we're going to use uh send keys apologies we're going to come up again so keys we're going to send keys and what we're going to do is we're going to uh, go ahead and type in admin into username and then do the same thing again for password so we're not actually using the key resource here that i that we've uh, imported here um so we're not actually using that yet i'll show you in a second us utilizing that so password and then send keys 
and this time password is going to be admin2 there we go so all we've done now is we've entered in that box in those two inputs the uh, username and password right so now we need to submit so we need to find the submit button so it's a similar process uh, let's find the submit button driver um, dot find element by I'll do this one by ID uh, so the ID of the button where we press to submit submit should be called submit so let's just uh, double check that so if I right click on the button you can see here as an ID of submit okay so that's the button selected right so now we have that we can now also submit so this is where we're going to bring in our keys so send keys now we're actually going to get key so we refer to key and we're going to use the return key so essentially we're just going to press enter on that button to actually it should be key sorry we're going to press enter on that button that's the action we're going to perform on that button using the tools we brought in here to simulate the keys and we're going to press the enter button that's going to submit and it's going to log the user in of course that will then take the user um, to the home page now that's just been set up if you're not too familiar with that so here for example in settings apologies to scroll down we've got the login redirect so that's just going to redirect people when they log in to the home page again right so we know that the home page in templates in the index here we know that when they are authenticated it will then display the username so what we're going to do is log that person in and now we're just going to run a simple assert to check to see that admin the word admin is in that page so driver page source All right so we're going to look in the page source and look for the word admin that should be in there because we are logged in as admin and it should say or be printed on the page um let's have a look it should be printed on the page um user admin there we go so we can slim that down uh, we can define that uh, a little bit more if we wanted to this example here I'm just being generic as possible uh, so that's probably going to need to be a capital okay because we imported it as a capital there keys so just before we run this test let's go ahead and just comment this out so we're not running that test too um, I've removed the timers so I've added some timers here um, let's just add a little bit of time before um, although this probably won't work um, just after where we actually type in the name see if we can kind of capture and see that actually happening right so let's go ahead and run the test so our window opens we're going to wait a couple of seconds you're going to see admin admin inserted yep there we go enter was pressed goes to the home page and everything was okay looks like we've logged in all right so there we have an introduction to selenium with Python Django. In this tutorial, we did cover quite a bit. If you are new to testing in general, that might seem the case. If you're quite experienced or you have some experience, maybe um, that's not going to be the case. So we will continue from here. So core to this is, like I said, getting started, but probably the most generic thing in most applications is forms. And this is why I focused on it in this tutorial. So now hopefully, I've given you the, the basics for you to get started now testing your forms in your Django web applications. As ever, thank you very much for listening and hopefully I'll see you in the next tutorial.